Hello and welcome to this rapid revision video. My name is Mr. James and as you can see today our topic is germ theory and specifically that means the work of Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. We'll be looking at both of their discoveries and the significance and the limitations of their work. Before we talk about germ theory, let's talk about what comes before. The key points are this. In 1700, the miasma theory was still very popular. And this is popular as a theory to explain what caused disease or where it came from. Because of this, scientists and doctors were very keen to study rotting matter or decaying matter. They found tiny organisms on this rotting matter and that led to them creating the spontaneous generation theory. This is the idea that these microorganisms were caused by the decaying matter. Or to put it another way, these living things, these microorganisms, were caused by non-living things. That's important to know because Louis Pasteur's main discovery is that he proves spontaneous generation to be wrong and he develops in its place germ theory. How does he do this? Well, Louis Pasteur is a scientist in France and he is called in to investigate the struggling French beer, wine and milk industries in the 1850s. He observes in each of these liquids that there are microbes causing the liquids to turn bad. That leads him to develop a germ theory that he publishes in 1861. And it makes four claims. Firstly, that the air contains living microorganisms. Two, that these microbes or microorganisms are not evenly distributed in the air. You can find more of them in some locations than others. These microbes in the air cause decay. So this is the opposite of spontaneous generation, which believes that decay causes microbes. Pasteur says that microbes cause decay. And he also finds that microbes can be killed by heating them. Now, many people do not believe this theory to begin with. But Louis Pasteur goes on to conduct a series of experiments to prove spontaneous generation is wrong and that it is in fact microbes in the air that cause decay. Now so far this is all based on liquids. However, in 1865 Louis Pasteur is asked to investigate a disease that is affecting silkworms which is therefore ruining the French silk industry. Pasteur finds a microbe that was causing this disease. And so he makes the link between microbes and human diseases. If a microbe is causing a disease in silkworms, then maybe microbes cause human diseases. This is hugely significant in one sense, because not only has he disproved spontaneous generation, he has proved that microbes cause decay and that microbes can cause diseases in animals. This should be hugely impactful, but in Britain, this has a limited impact for four reasons. Firstly, he's not a doctor. Thirdly, a popular doctor, Dr. Bastian, continues to promote spontaneous generation. Thirdly, there's lots of different microbes and we just can't identify what their role is. And even people who do agree with him, like John Tyndall, are just not trusted like Bastian. That's where Robert Koch comes in, because Robert Koch discovers which specific microbes cause certain diseases. He reads Pasteur's theory and discovers the microbes causing anthrax and tuberculosis. He does this by connecting a lens to his microscope, which allows him to photograph his methods and demonstrate them. He grows bacteria in petri dishes of agar jelly to test them, and he develops a method of staining invisible microbes so they can be studied. 
he also discovers the micro causing cholera in 1883. The impact of this is huge. Firstly, a new branch of science, bacteriology, is founded, and this causes a flurry of discoveries in terms of microbes and what diseases they cause over the next 10 years. Scientists and doctors now can understand microbes, they can identify microbes, they can study them, and they can treat disease because they understand that diseases need to be eliminated by eliminating the microbes that cause them. However, there is a limitation. They do not know how to do this yet, how to treat those microbes and remove them. That's our rapid revision over. Feel free to test the content, consolidate the content or apply this content to improve your knowledge of germ theory.